Um, so um, I can go first. Um, my name's Leia. I'm a junior. I'm from Burlingame High School. And one of the reasons I came to middle college was mostly because of like the um, variety of college courses that the um, that like the program could offer and also the flexibility. And also because I want to go into pre-med and it was just like, it was perfect. And I'm glad it worked out. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Lea's mom. Uh, my name is Yonida. I am a recruiter in real life, but very happy to share my experience as a parent with you. I joined the same meeting a year ago, um, thinking about this opportunity as something that we never heard of. So I uh, would encourage you and um, anyone uh, in your families, I mean, your kids to attend these meetings because they will learn so much. Um, one of the reasons why we were um, very happy for our daughter to attend this program is the, the confidence that the, the, um, the student will gain through this program. And by confidence, I don't, um, I don't mean the fact that they are going to be in cohorts, they're going to meet new people, but this is a transition toward um, college life. And so for us, it was definitely the best option for, um, for our daughter to go through this transition now and build those leadership skills, that confidence in the beginning. Um, don't forget that this program allows your kids to, um, to take classes with college professors as, as well as with the uh, middle college professors that are here present today. So that's a unique opportunity when I think about the AP program that my daughter went to and BHS, this is different. Um, to us, this was better. Um, and also I would say the care that uh, we've seen from the professors to, to our daughter, the program that they have, I would say it is very inclusive. When you think about what my daughter is going to uh, become in her adult life, the people that she is going to meet with, their backgrounds, their community. We wanted our daughter to have this experience and um, be able to, uh, you know, lend a hand to everyone. Um, I'm not saying that the schools where your kids are right now are different, but this is an opportunity um, for them to be more visible, to understand better as the world we are in is changing. So um, without any further ado, I am going to pause here. I'm very happy to help uh, with, with anything else after this meeting, professors or any parents. So um, enjoy this, this, um, this meeting. I, I hope you, you will enjoy the information here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Melita. That was a perfect introduction to some of the things we're gonna be talking about today. Um, so it, it, I think the name is really important to who we are. It's middle college. It's an opportunity for students to get one foot in college while they're still in high school. You know, in, in our country, we really engage often in a really expensive experiment where we send students off to college having never done college before. And we spend tons of money to see if that experiment is going to work when we're, we're sending off tuition. I have a daughter who's a junior in, in college right now, and I know about that experiment. Luckily, it's working out, but um, it, it's, it's a big move when they suddenly make that shift from high school to college. And, and as Ms. Melita said, um, AP is one way of dealing with that, but we believe we offer a really viable alternative that has some unique things it offers. And we wanna to talk to you about those today. So if I could get the next slide. Um, we want you to understand that our program is a part of the San Mateo Union High School District. The students in no way would be leaving the school district. In fact, you know, technically and in some ways other than technically, they are still a student at their home school. They just choose to come to us for their classes and sometimes the other programs we offer. Um, we, we accept the vast majority of our students as juniors. We really believe that the program works best when students are with us for two years. Um, but we do sometimes have a few spaces for seniors that come for just one year. Um, and as I was saying, you know, this kind of based on 
two fundamental ideas. Our program exists on these two fundamental ideas that one is it's a really good idea for students to have experience with college before they get to college. And that for some students that that really works well. It's also based on the idea that one size doesn't fit all. I mean, that there's no reason why for some students, the traditional American high school works fine. But why would it work that way for absolutely every student? Um, maybe there are other ways to, to complete your high school um, education and prepare for what comes next. And we think we offer a, a really exciting um, opportunity in that, in that fashion. Next slide, please. So um, who should come to middle college? This, this is actually a really hard question to answer because there are a lot of different reasons why students might wanna to come to middle college. Um, we believe we offer a really, uh, a very important opportunity for students who are gonna be the first in their family to go to the university. Um, I know that my dad did not go to college and uh, we didn't have those conversations around the kitchen table about how you do this and how you do that and how is college going to, to work and how do, you, how do you navigate that system. Um, students who come to us get support and experience in navigating that system but they don't have to figure it all out at once. And I think that's really, it's important for all students, but it has a, a it's a uniquely important um, part of our program to first generation students. It's definitely a great place for students who are seeking a more mature environment. Um, you know, there, everybody knows what teenagers can sometimes be like. And we're kind of lucky that we get students who select themselves um, to come to our program because they want to be there. You know, every student that has come to our program made a choice and that's an investment that they have. Um, they're also gonna be in classrooms with students who are sometimes older than them. And I know that's a concern for some parents. What is that like? We're in our 20 something, year of existence. And um, we've had lots and lots of graduates who have, have really benefited from being around a variety of other students, um, you know, ranging from 18 and 19 year olds. And truth be told, most of our students, everyone just thinks they're 18 and 19 year olds. They don't realize they're still high school students. Um, but, you know, once in a while, there's that, I don't know, a, a a parent that raised their children and then they've decided to go back to school and they could be sitting in that sociology class or it could be a student, uh, somebody who's returned from the military and is going back to school and the perspectives that a, that a young person might get um, could, can really be expanded through this kind of experience. The program works best for students who are academically motivated, independent, and responsible. If you are the sort of parent that feels like you need to hover above your child daily to make sure they are doing their work, this is not a great program for that type of student. Um, we do not always know uh, whether they went to their college class that day. We cannot guarantee that we, you know, they tell us they did, um, but we're not sitting in that college classroom taking role. Um, it, this is a program for students who are motivated and responsible and ready to handle that kind of independence. Um, we are there to offer support. We are there, we're not just hands off, not paying any attention to where they are, um, but we, we expect something from our students if they're, if they're coming to this program. We'll be telling you more, and you heard a little bit from Leah about you know, the wide variety of courses that are available. That's a reason to come. Um, it helps students sometimes figure out what their major is or what will be. Um, it's an opportunity to explore a little bit more. We'll talk often probably tonight about the possibility of reducing the cost of college through this program. 
I'll say real briefly right now that many of our graduates have finished a year of college by the time they finish two years in our program. And if you've checked into how much a year of college costs this day, this day and age, then you can imagine how much you might be able to save. Um, it's a program for students who are on track to graduate on time. We're not looking for every student to be a 4.0 student. Um, we take students with a range of abilities, but they do need to feel comfortable with the idea of taking some college classes and asking for help when they need help. Um, and, uh, but we do have students from with a, a range of abilities. Um, and one of the most important things about our program is that we are a very community oriented program where we expect students to, to participate and be a part of, of the community they're joining to realize that things they say and do have an impact on everyone. Um, and sometimes it's even a place where people that didn't feel so comfortable speaking up or joining at the bigger school might feel a little more comfortable speaking up or joining in the smaller community that we have to offer. Okay, there's a lot on that slide. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the values that we have at Middle College as a community and, um, and what we kind of stand for, what we hope students um, um, feel they, some of the skills they might develop, some of the, um, like I said, like the values that kind of undergird our, our program. Um, we are committed to student choice and agency as a um, um, as everyone has talked about already, there's lots of opportunities for students, uh, a lot of academic choices. Um, we are, um, we would like to offer more opportunities, like Mr. Lance said, to um, uh, students who have been historically underrepresented in college. Um, for many of our students, sometimes this is the first time, like um, first gen students who are trying to navigate a new system and we offer a lot of support in that area. Um, uh, we wanna make sure that students feel comfortable and they feel confident in the educational spaces. So, um, you know, we have a history and we have English courses and we also have advisory and all of that and the one-on-one -on -one, um, kind of, um, meetings that we had conferences that we have with students help ensure that they um, feel supported throughout this process that they're not doing everything completely alone um, college guidance so it's middle college that means that they'll be experiencing the college classes on their own but for some students and actually for a majority of students especially juniors coming in there's um a certain skills that you need to have when you're, you know, talking with professors. Um, how do you send an email? How do you go to office hours? How do you participate in class? Um, where do you get, where do you find resources? So all of that is um, part of our curriculum, also an advisory. And like I said, we do one-on-one -on -one check ins with our students. Um, at least once a month. And um, we spend some time getting to know your student, what their educational goals are and how we can help them achieve those. Um, we also in our history and social science classes make sure that students feel like they are getting support that in reading and writing that will help them in their college classes. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Thanks. Um, we also are committed to seeing your student, not just as a student, but as a whole human being, that um, we would like our students to practice um, self-awareness, being um, a part of a group, a community, while they have their individual goals, that they're still part of this, this community that is in cohorts um, and that they are, I've seen it in my own classes, how they develop relationships, um, how they learn to work with each other and how, even though they might be going on different paths, that when they come together in our classes, they are very supportive in learning from each other. Um, and so in that way, we get to see I got to witness this year um, because, I, I'm, again, I'm new to middle college, how students um, use each other as resources also. Um, there's a lot of bright and open-minded students that come in and are, want to share their knowledge and their experiences together. Um, so that's part of building healthier relationships and empathy. Um, 
we would like to ensure that we are creating spaces for all students to feel welcome, seen, heard, and supported. That means that we are providing um, spaces that are free of racism, classism, sexism, ableism, homophobia, neurotypicality. Um, sometimes um, students come to middle college because of experiences that they might have had in their homeschool, and they would like a different kind of experience um, at middle college. Um, we are committed to, we strive to uh, in practice, because we have 200 students in this smaller learning community to remove barriers of oppressive systems in practice. It's not perfect, obviously, but this is something that we strive to do. Um, and we do that, one of the ways we do that is through our curriculum. Uh, we would like students to feel that they have ownership over how they demonstrate their knowledge, how they demonstrate their learning. Um, and um, a lot of that has to do with the type of curriculum, curriculum that we offer. Um, we want students to know that their cultural assets, their experiences, their home life, that they can bring it into the classroom. They don't need to leave it at the door, that it is something that's valued in this space. Um, and we're also committed to anti-racist beliefs and practices um, in, in our community and also in our curriculum. Um, I think I think that's you, Greg. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was okay. Oh, so, sorry, that's me. That's me. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was talking to myself again. I was muted. My apologies. Uh, I just want to take a moment to welcome those of you that joined us after we gave our welcome messages. Uh, the chat is not enabled because we would not be able to to monitor the chat very well and respond to everyone's questions. There will be a document that we will share with you at the end of the presentation that allows you to record your questions for us. And then once we compile all the questions, we will respond to those questions and push it back out to you, uh, post it on our web page, send you the slides, as well as let you know when the application does go live. So if you do require Spanish interpretation, please go ahead and see the message in the chat. And our Spanish interpreter will is now, yeah, he's going at it right now, translating what we're saying for you, if that would be helpful. We have two other opportunities to hear about the Middle College program. We will be going live in person at Middle College on Wednesday, January 25th, and we'll do another Zoom on Tuesday, January 31st. So I just wanted to reiterate our welcoming messages uh, in case you did not hear that when we began. Spanish interpretation is available, and there will be an opportunity for you to write your questions down into a Google form for us, and we will respond to them and compile them and get them back out to you. All right. When you do come up to middle college, if you do decide to come up and join us at middle college, you're going to want to know what your day is like. It is not a standard seven period day with bells ringing, telling you when to go to class, when lunch, when brunch and end of the day are. All right. Our schedule, I'll show you a couple of examples of our schedule possibilities in just a moment. You're going to take three classes with your high school peers and teachers. That would be like Ms. Poblete, Mr. Lance, myself. We're going to teach you 10, 11th and 12th grade English and history social studies. So that's U.S. history, English 3, government and econ, English 4. We also have an advisory course, which is where we deal with social emotional wellness, where we talk about senior reflection assignments, where we talk about future planning and goals and college applications and financial aid and a whole host of things that occur that we talk about in our advisory program. So that's just part of your day, though. Part of your day is with us. You're with us for about three hours a day, every day, doing the typical kind of high school classes with your high school peers. The rest of your time, though, you're free to schedule your college classes based on when they're offered, obviously, as well as when you can fit it into your schedule. So most students take two or three academic college classes each semester. They're taking a whole variety of courses. We'll show you a sampling of the courses that our students are taking in just a moment. So somewhere between, you know, six is the minimum, upwards of 11-ish, um, kind of depends on the students' strengths and their capabilities. So let's take a look at a sample schedule. 
you'll see on the screen here that we have a sample schedule. Not every student's schedule is going to look like this. But because of COVID, we've had our students cohorted. That means they are grouped together. So they will do English and US his and history together. Next year, when we hopefully exit COVID and quarantine restrictions, the schedule will be a lot more open with more options for students to schedule and take US history or their English or their gut econ classes. But you'll see on the sample schedule on your screen, the courses in yellow are the high school courses taught by middle college staff. That's US history at nine, English at 10, and the advisory at 11 o'clock. You see that this student has also signed up for the college course Philosophy 100, which starts at 8 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They also have Math 220 at 12 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And at 12 o'clock on Tuesday and Thursday, they have Digital Media, Introduction to Digital Media. So you see that this student has been able to kind of keep their schedule pretty compact and tight. All right, if they start a little bit earlier on three days a week and they end the same time five days a week. Now, this is a nice, neat, tight schedule. They don't all look like that. Based on the college course offerings, based on students' work or sports or extracurricular schedules, it doesn't always work out this way. A second sample schedule might be something like this. Perhaps a high school student you may know doesn't like early mornings and would like to have a slightly later start. Okay, we can do that with the schedule. The student can select a later high school course schedule like the 11 o'clock advisory, 12 o'clock English and one o'clock history course. And then they end every day at three o'clock still, just like a comprehensive site, right? Math 225 and Bio 130, alternating days. And they said, you know what, two days a week, they can get up a little earlier. So this student has signed up for Introduction to Psychology, Psych 100, on Tuesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock. So again, this schedule is tight, it's contiguous, it's, it's, it's nice and neat. What you may notice is missing from this schedule is there's no lunch break. There's no brunch in here. There's no, like, how do you schedule all that type of stuff? So that, again, the student has to take into consideration when they want to eat, when they need a break. Yes, there is a 10 minute passing period in between uh, all these courses here, which we didn't kind of we didn't reflect on the actual schedule. But that's they got to take that into account. When are they going to take care of what they need to take care of? Now, here are some sample classes taken by our middle college students just this last semester. So just a month ago, our students were in a whole host of classes. Basically, anything that is open to the general CSM student body is open to any middle college student. They can take any of the art classes like beginning photography or black and white photography or modern dance. They can take sciences like biology or chemistry or the calculus series, or maybe they wanna start studying some possible career or college majors. So they're getting into botany or kinesiology or marriage and family, courtship, physics, that, a whole host of things. And this is just a small sampling. Of, I mean, it's actually a pretty inclusive sampling of the courses that our students took this past semester. And that's just page one. Page two is right on here, which finishes on off the last half of the alphabet there, last bit of the alphabet. But you'll see things like track and trail aerobics, dance. They can take physical education, PE type courses there. They can take courses like rethinking race, gender, and nation, or small business management, or various types of psychology or real estate courses. So again, almost anything that is offered to the general CSM population, our students can take. And you see, they take a whole host of different types of courses. Um, I'm I'm wondering if for just a moment, if Leah doesn't mind, would you say briefly what your schedule was like in the fall and what your schedule is like is shaping up this this spring semester? Could I spring that on you? Would that be all right? Absolutely. Um, so last semester, my schedule was basically the um, I, I'm in cohort one, so I would have the earlier schedule at eight a.m. and so. Um, later on in the day 
I, um, alternating Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I would have general physics one and then general chemistry one. And those would alternate at different times, but um, that was my schedule last semester. And then for this semester, it's a little bit more jam packed, but at the same time, I'm getting through a lot of my graduation requirements. So um, I'd be taking the second class to um, chemistry, which was general chemistry two. Um, I'd be taking calculus one, um, that would be asynchronous. And then uh, cultural geography was also asynchronous. And then uh, there was a, I'm taking also a film class that's also asynchronous, but um, I know like a lot of the classes have Zoom meetings. So yeah, it's pretty manageable on my level, but depends on the student. Right, I mean, I, I wanted to do that because you know, those two schedules that we showed you are for two students and we have 200 students and 200 different schedules. So you know, they all have to have those core high school classes, but everybody's got different interests and different goals. So you're gonna see a lot of different schedules. Who's got, is this one me? Yes, okay. So you, you're, you started to hear allusions to graduation requirements. And so this is kind of the secret sauce of middle college. Um, basically, if a student stays at their home school, there are plenty of classes for them to take in order to graduate and, and take the classes they need to meet their graduation requirements. But those classes are limited. And when they graduate, they don't get to take them with them. When a student graduates from middle college and they have used college classes to meet their high school graduation requirements, they get to keep those college units. They get to double dip. They use their, their college classes for both high school graduation and for going to college. Now you might say, well, AP kind of does that. And it kind of does because if a student gets a five or a four on the AP test, colleges will usually accept that class. A few colleges take threes, but that's getting to be less common these days. Um, so the difference is that a student can take a actual college class at CSM their ability to take it with them to college doesn't all come down to one score on one test. It comes down to how they did in that class over the course of the semester. Um, most of our students come into middle college having already completed the requirements on the left. They still need to take the classes that you see on the screen on the right. English and US history and economics and American government are offered by high school teachers. Mathematics, career technical education requirement, visual and performing arts, elective credits, whatever a student still needs in any of those areas, um, another year of science for a UC requirement, they take all of those classes through the college and they get to double dip. They get to use those classes for both high school graduation and towards future college credits. So why might a student come to middle college? I think maybe you're starting to put some of this together. Um, it's another pathway to completing high school. It's an alternative to AP. AP programs are, are excellent in many ways. There are many excellent AP teachers at the high schools throughout the district. Um, we're very proud of our colleagues and what they have to offer out there. But I also know that, you know, the same thing doesn't work the same way for everyone, right? AP might be the right track for some students and a different track might be a different, a, a better Middle opportunity. Middle college presentation. Oh, so Oops. 
And so, um, you know, that's that's important to realize, you know, what works best for your student. Middle college is not right for everybody. Some people will really benefit from staying in the AP programs and what they have to offer. We are a small community that can really pay attention to students' academic growth and well being, as long as they bring with them also a level of responsibility and independence that um, this kind of program is going to ask of them. It's a great way to save time and money. Sometimes, uh, you know, people start to realize that uh, waiting until college starts to take college classes can be expensive. Um, our students, many of them will have completed up to 40 college units by the time they graduate from high school. That could be a whole year of college. And at a UC, that's going to be $20,000, $30,000 or so. At a private school, that could be $60,000. Um, so that's substantial savings. Um, and time too, because that student might be able to finish college in three years instead of four years. Um, the last reason I think that's not necessarily on this slide is a student's own well-being. You know, that if, if a student is happy and thriving at their home school um, and just loves what they see on the horizon for the next two years, that is a great place. Um, if the student can't imagine not being there for pep rallies and lunchtime with their friends in the, the center court, and if all that kind of stuff seems really, really important to that student, it might be a really hard thing to change to um, middle college and come up there for, for their days th for two years as they finish high school. Um, but for some students, that's a breath of fresh air. And uh, that's what we hope to offer those students that are looking for that. So if you decide, if, you're, if your student decides to come to middle college, um, some of the things that um, will not change that um, we are a program, we're not a school. So we don't have an athletic department or um, uh, extracurriculars. We have clubs, we have a lot of clubs and Leah can actually tell you a little bit about, she's like in almost every club. Uh, but um, if your student decides to come to middle college, they can still be part of whatever sport or activities or clubs that they um, um, were in before coming to middle college. So if they're in football, soccer, lacrosse, um, if they're on the swim team, they can still be part of that. In fact, I have a student right now who came to middle college because he wanted his afternoons free so that he could um, attend and prepare for um, all of his swim practices and meets. Um, he wants to go to college and swim at the college level. So it's really important to him that he has this um, has this time to focus. Um, and it's worked out really well for him. Um, club participation. Um, my my cohort, there tends to, and you can talk a little bit about this, um, Leah, also, you seem very motivated to be in the clubs at middle college. So like I said, the students go back to their home school sometimes for like robotics or whatever club they're in, uh, color guard, um, orchestra. Um, and But we do offer many clubs at middle college also. And sometimes students find that they um, they have these leadership skills that they didn't know they had in their home skill, but at uh, home school, but they have it here. Um, so before I go on to the next things, do you want to talk a little bit about the clubs, Leah? Uh, sure, absolutely. So for clubs, there's a there's a variety. So there's um, a lot of like volunteer clubs. There's um, Middle College Effect Local, which focuses on volunteering and participating in your community more locally. And then there's uh, Middle College Effect Global, and that works on a more global level. And those are more like community um, outreach kind of uh, clubs. And then there's also the the other side of that coin where you have clubs like music appreciation and those are more like fun kind of socializing um and then um uh, yeah there's a lot of there's just a lot of um outreach programs or not programs clubs um and i personally i 
lead kind of a club, and that's um, the Middle College um, Student Ambassadors, which um, if your child or your student has already been attending the presentations, there's a section where um, they can ask questions and me and other students in that club will like get will get back to them. And I've been helping kind of lead that and kind of keep the communication between our homeschools and middle college just more uh, connected. And that's just a variety of the clubs that we have. There's a ton more. Thank you, Leah. Um, in addition, if there are activities at the home school that the stu that your student wants to attend, they can still attend that. So prom, dances, um, field trips, and graduation. So there's two graduations. There's the middle college graduation, and then they can go back to their home school and have the graduation there too. Um, if there's a connection that your student has with a co college or career counselor at their home school, they can keep that connection. We have um, a part-time academic counselor, um, two part-time wellness counselors that um, are here for our students. And so they can maintain those relationships with their home school, like adults, if they have strong relationships. But we also offer those services, and I can see that they've been incredibly helpful to our students um, at Middle College. And I think a key point as well uh, is that students can choose how much interaction they want to have with their homeschool. If you mm -hmm. love everything about your homeschool, that's mm -hmm. great. Continue to do those things. But there are some students who have less than ideal or less than perfect experiences with their homeschools, and they really don't want to have to go back to their homeschools, mm -hmm. which is totally fine, too. So our students really are a spectrum of how involved they are with their homeschools as well. Yeah, thanks, that's right. Thanks, Terry. So um, what will change if you come to middle college? Um, we hope that by being part of this community and being in the collegiate kind of environment that students become more mature and independent. Um, some students already feel that way when they come in, but we can already we can see because of the environment that um, students definitely grow. Um, they're around many more adults in their classes and they get to make a lot of choices. They're independent. And that also honestly requires more responsibility. Um, when 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 Mr. Lean and Mr. Lance were going over the schedules, that for that time that is not in class, students need to learn how to manage that time. And for some, that is a real big learning curve. Like, I have all this free time. Look, I only have classes on these days. And then, but they also have exams and then um, their final papers. And if those moments are not used to study or get into study groups and, you know, they have to make these decisions around like, socializing or getting into a study group. And so there is a little bit of transition junior year about like, how do you use that time? Um, adjusting to the rigor of a collegiate curriculum and then better understanding how college works. And if you don't know your major, if your student doesn't know their major, that's absolutely fine. Clearly Leah knew right away when she came to middle college, what she wanted to do. If your student doesn't, that's 100% okay. I mean, that is the idea is that you get exposed to and get to get to take a variety of different classes um, and that you can even graduate without knowing yet what they want to study at a four year university or in, in their career. Um, and so, Leah, I don't know if you're there or not, but um, could you talk a little bit about how you feel like you've changed as being part of the community? Um, sure, I think there's there's two ways I can answer that. There's um, academic and then there's social. Um, I'll answer both. For academic, I'd say that I've definitely learned how to be more proactive in communicating with my teachers. I think that's something that I didn't necessarily lack, but I didn't know how to how to do or how to be better at when I was at my homeschool. And I think that's, that's me talking, but um, I think being like being put in a more um, mature or yeah, mature position where I had to be, where I had a larger responsibility. I think, um, especially since I was taking very difficult college classes that like pushed me to be more responsible and kind of be more proactive as a student. And then socially, I I was put in like 
coming to middle college, I, I voluntarily was put in a position where I had to socialize with people I didn't know. And for me, I'm someone who likes to be very social. And so that that came naturally to me. But definitely, I learned how to be more mature, especially with people that I didn't know. And for me, that was great. And yeah, I just, I, I can see just from a semester alone how much I've grown. And I think um, my teachers can see that as well. Thank you. Um, next slide. All right. So Ms. Poblete, Mr. Lance, and myself are just half of the teaching staff at Middle College. So I'm just going to briefly introduce the rest of our teaching staff, as well as our staff, the rest of the staff at Middle College. So Mr. Lance is here, obviously. Uh, Jennifer Rohrbach is one of our history social studies teachers and currently teaches juniors and senior US, uh, US history and government economics. Ms. Redgate there, or Redgate, is our other one of our other English teachers. So between Mr. Lance, Ms. Poblete, and Redgate, you have our three middle college English teachers. Uh, you have Ms. Poblete here as well. And to the very right on your screen, you'll see Jason Letke, one of the other history social science teachers who is currently teaching uh, all US history, so all juniors. We do have a counselor, part-time counselor, and a part-time wellness counselor. So Ms. B and Ms. Kauf are there to support students' academic and social emotional needs uh, while they're at middle college. Just as easily to, just as much as they can support your students at middle college, your students can choose to continue their relationships with their academic counselors, as well as their wellness counselors at their home sites. So both Ms. B and Ms. Kauf are there roughly four days a week. Okay. We have uh, Mr. Skatena, who is the middle college principal, as well as the district's director of student services. So things like interdistrict transfers or, you know, heaven forbid, a, a disciplinary issue, uh, all go to Mr. Skatena. Luckily, that is not an issue with us at Middle College because our students are so well behaved and so highly motivated. Uh, new this year is Ms. Block, who is a program coordinator who helps oversee and coordinate and deal with so many of the details that we have to deal with because we are a program. Uh, that means we, the staff, plan themes and field trips and events and our dance and graduation. So a whole host of details that perhaps are handled by a number of people or a team at the home sites are handled by the nine people or 10 people on the screen or at Middle College that you just saw there. Mr. Lance. So, you know, I, we just want you to know that the resources your student might need are that are available at the home school are also available up at the uh, middle college. Again, they are more than welcome to continue to go down and see somebody at their home school if they would like to do that. Um, they're not allowed to go just wander around campus. Um, that would get them in trouble. Uh, but they can, you know, occasionally we have a student that takes one class back at their home school if they can get the uh, coordination, the logistics worked out for that. Um, occasionally, a student might stay in the orchestra or the choir or take an AP Spanish class, but they do have to be able to work that into their schedule, and they have to be able to figure out the logistics to do that. But if they wanted to go talk to their, their counselor, they were more than welcome to still go back and talk to their counselor if they ever wanted to. Next slide. There we go. So the wellness counselor is readily available. I think one of the, the, you know, one of the biggest things I've seen change in my career of teaching, which stretches out rather long, um, is uh, how normalized it is to talk to somebody about your wellness. And uh, we, we really value that at, at middle college, that students feel very comfortable if they, you know, they have lots of things they need to take care of. One of them is their wellness. And so we have lots of ways that if a student ever needs to, they can access um, um, 
opportunities to do that. Uh, uh, just a brief few words about any student that might have a 504 or an IEP. Uh, we have students with 504s and IEPs in our program. It needs to be the sort of student that is uh, responsible and able to start managing their own IEP to some degree. Um, you know, that it's, it's, they're moving into the college space and to, again, having a parent hovering would be a sort of awkward situation, but we have um, many students with 504s or IEPs and they tend to be students that are able to advocate for themselves and whatever um, issue they might struggle with doesn't prohibit them from being successful in a college class. Um, IEPs are, are honored in 504s at the, uh, at the College of San Mateo. A student needs to walk it over to the office that is responsible for that. And then they can ask their professors for the accommodations that are due them in their 504 or their IEP. So um, it's not uh, something that is prohibitive from coming to the, the program. Again, though, it just that same common level of responsibility, um, maturity, um, that, that's, that's important in all our students. And, and so a student that has an IEP needs to have that same skill. I mean, we couldn't promote middle college without talking about we are on a college campus, right? It is a community college campus and a lot, it is a beautiful community college campus. I mean, I, I find myself stopping every day just to look at the view. And in, even in the stormy weather, even in the rain, it really is a gorgeous campus. And it is a college feel to the entire community. Uh, pictured here on the screen and in the, my background here, you'll see the College Center, which is building 10. Office of the President is here, a number of administration, as well as teachers' office hours, professors' office hours are in this building, financial aid, the cashier. Uh, on the ground level, you'll see on the bottom right corner is the academic center. So that's where you can go for general academic support. Each of the departments also holds like a math resource center or a science resource center to help support students in their specific content areas. But the academic center is there for study rooms, for general tutoring support uh, like that. You also have the bookstore in Building 10, uh, a Starbucks coffee stand in there, and the cafeteria. There's the big Bayview room where students can go to relax, to study, to eat, to charge their phones. So it is like a college center, a college quad that you would find on any number of college campuses. So as beautiful as this campus is, as beautiful and modern as that building you see in front of you is, we are just to the left of the picture. So we are just kind of off screen um, in, in our own kind of our own floor of building 12. So we are really adjacent to all of the resources, supports, and kind of the hub of the college campus. Um, so when you think about like, oh, how's my student get lunch really quickly? Well, we really are a little the next building over, just off picture here. Up next, we have a video that was produced by current middle college students. So all of the students you'll hear from today are current middle college students. Um, some of the footage though might be some stock footage from College of San Mateo or might not be of actual middle college students. But the voices that you hear talking about their middle college experience and the decision to join middle college are our current middle college students. That's why you still see some of them masked um, because when they filmed that, we were still masking at that time. So give a listen there, folks, and we'll begin to wrap up shortly thereafter. that we're given as middle college students has really taught me um, so many things of dealing with hardships and uh, making connections with people and not being afraid to ask for help. So all the things that middle college has pushed for students to have, 
um, has really worked for me. It's really entered me and I love it. What has worked for me as a middle college student is, um, you know, picking your own classes, uh, creating your own schedule, knowing what you want to do, and having that help you to your best ability. I think that from like the first day of junior orientation, I just, I immediately became really attached to these people that I'm really good friends with now in senior year. And one of my first impressions was just how nice everyone was and just how everyone was, had shared like a similar goal. There's just something really cool about that. There's, it's just very, it makes for a really vibrant learning environment. Because of how small it is, it's just everybody is so connected, especially with uh, the teachers, and it makes the relationship with you and your education so much better because you know everybody here. You know the staff, so you're able to like go to them for anything that you need. Well, before when I was in high school, I used to never really know how to study. Well, now I know a lot of, of what works for me and what doesn't in terms of learning things. That's something I never would have had to figure out when I was in you know, regular high school. And yeah, it's really helped me be really independent and just kind of do things for myself, take things in my own direction. Some of the just relationships I've developed in middle college are some of the most special to me. Having this sort of like smaller community where I got to make so many friends, including these two, has just been like amazing. I'm really thankful for Middle College as well because like, I feel like it has been like a real eye-opening experience because you know they teach like a lot of things how to like how to fight colleges, for scholarships, FAFSA, and all those things. I feel like it's been really helpful. It's not just like a school. You're not just in a classroom and doing work. It's like you're actually having a fun time learning and working with you know, your, like your best friends, you know, that you've made here and, you know, the teacher that you really love. So it's so fun to just, honestly, it's so fun to come to school every day. Okay. So one of the questions we often got get from some parents anyway is, so which is better? Should we stay at our home school? Will that help us get into Stanford? Or should we come to middle college? Well, um, first of all, we want to really be clear that we don't believe either path is better. Um, and we also don't necessarily believe that everybody needs to go to Stanford. Um, that's, that's not the kind of place we are either. Um, but a large number of our students uh, um, go on to four-year colleges, and we'll show you a list in a little bit. It's a wide variety of colleges. So clearly, um, colleges are valuing the, the the type of student that is graduating from our program. Um, our focus is very much on making sure that students are prepared to go on and be successful in college. As I mentioned, we take a variety of students with different abilities and different needs, but our focus is also on developing whole human beings. We, we don't see students just as you know GPAs. And so uh, that, that's, that's really an important part of being at middle college is, is growing as a human being as well as growing as a student. But we do believe we, we send off students very well prepared. Um, the next slide, I believe. Oh, we don't have that slide. Oh, we do have that slide. Yeah, so you can, you know, we, we do send students to all kinds of universities. Many students continue at the community college for another year or two and then, and then transfer. Some students go directly to four-year colleges. Increasingly, students are figuring out that sometimes to some of their dream schools, the, the, the best path is the transfer route. 
that sometimes that's a, a, the odds of getting into those competitive UCs as a transfer student increase greatly as a transfer student. But we have sent students to Berkeley and UC Davis and UCLA over the years. These are all the classes, the, the colleges that students went to last year. I'm if, sure, like oh yeah, you, well, that you are just as interested in applying and going to middle college as I am. All right. <laughs> so obviously you're here tonight and you're there's been some nudging or 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 suggestion that you come here after we presented two three of our comprehensive sites so absolutely if you're interested we're going to have the applications posted as soon as we can we're aiming to get them posted um, later this week or, and at this website v.ht slash mc app we will also put out blasts to the entire sophomore class on email reminding them uh, the application is open right uh, but let's say you might need a little more convincing or just not quite sure. Your student is able to shadow with a current middle college student or a small group of middle college students February 7th through 10th. So it literally is following that student through their college classes as well as their high school classes and getting a feel for the flow of the day. So that information will also be sent out and posted for you on how to sign up for a particular day. It is not all, all days. It's not February 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, all right? It is a day, it is a half a day, it could be a full day. It, it's There's a number of options available to students. I think it actually is only a half day for on any of those days, right? So then you can kind of get see how that flows walking between college classes and high school classes, all right? Obviously you're here January 11th for our presentation on Zoom. If you would want to hear it again, and perhaps meet the other half of the teaching staff, you're more than welcome to join us on January 25th in person at the College of San Mateo in that big, beautiful college center building that I showed you earlier and is pictured behind me on my Zoom, All right? That one will be in person. And then we'll follow up on January 31st with another Zoom presentation in Spanish, All right? If you perhaps missed something, have uh, just want to come on by and check, you're more than welcome to join us on either January 25th or January 31st. Again, we'll post the link for the application. We'll update that link. Um, it will be at v.ht slash MC app, but we will get that one posted as soon as we work it through the CSM channels to get it posted on the web page. All right. I'll give you an opportunity, of course, to complete a Google form if you have any questions about middle college, maybe something we said is kind of resonating with you and you want clarification about something, or you still have a burning question in your mind that you really want to know before you apply or before your parent consents to letting you go to middle college, by all means, uh, fill out our doc, which I just put into the chat right now. All right. That dog is live. You can populate it with the questions that you may have. We're going to compile all your questions and then we'll respond on a document and then send that one out as well as our slides for today's presentation and our Spanish slides as well. If for some reason you need a more immediate response, you are more than welcome to email our general email, middlecollege at smush.org, as well as check out our middle college website which is collegeofsanmateo.edu slash middle college. Right. Ms. Poblete, Mr. Lance, any uh, other words here? We, we hope to see some of your, your young people up with us. And uh, we think we do offer a, a program that really helps students grow um, as people and as students and, and become part of a vibrant community. And, we hope that some of your young people will be part of that next year. Yes, thank you so much for taking the time. And um, if you decide to come, I think that you'll be, or if your child decides to come, that you'll be very happy here, hopefully. I know we're ran over just a few minutes, so thank you for hanging in there with us tonight. Again, if there are questions, please feel free to fill out the Google form or drop an email to middlecollege at smush.org. Uh, if it's a more if, if it's of a more personal kind of specific individual circumstances type of question. Thank you very much. I will repost the link again just in case someone might have missed it. But feel free to respond to the Google form. 
and we'll get back to you. Thank you, Ms. Mulita and Leia. Also, thank you so much for your time and your perspective. Thank you. Thank you both. It was great meeting you both. And thank you to our translator as well for, for doing that work for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Stop the recording.